Hey everybody, welcome to Mindful Social. This week my guest is Kathleen Gage. And I've actually known her for quite some time as a coach for entrepreneurs and authors on growing businesses, marketing themselves and their books. She's an online marketing and sales strategist and she's got a lot of books on sales, marketing and entrepreneurship. I'm so glad to have you here, Kathleen. It feels like I've known you for years and it's actually the first time we've seen each other. You know, and this is delightful. I love technology specifically for this reason. So great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So let's dig right into it. You know, uh, in one of your books, The Law of Achievement, there's a lot of discussion about the power of gratitude and kind of how that's linked into being successful and, and achievement. Can you talk a little bit about the role that gratitude plays in actually getting stuff done? Absolutely. Um, gratitude actually is the foundation of everything I do um, because I come from a place where I wasn't very grateful for much of anything in my life. And fortunately, I had a spiritual mentor who kicked me in the backside and basically said, the reason your life is not working is because you're not noticing what's good in your life. And I, I couldn't get it at the time. I was in my 20s and really couldn't get it. And when I applied what she recommended, which was look for three things a day that you can be grateful for. And when she first said that, I said, I have nothing to be grateful for. And she goes, you're very arrogant. She goes, you're arrogant and you're so self-centered. That's part of your problem. And I, I was like, well, how could she say that? And now I can look back and I can see that I was very arrogant and very self-centered because I had a roof over my head. I had food in the refrigerator. I had my arms, my legs, my eyes. And she broke it down to that level of simplicity. And I've been able to transfer that over into my business in that when we really look at what we have to be grateful for, we notice more that we have to be grateful for. And the universe, God, higher power, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, I choose to call my, my source God and higher power, um, tends to reward us with more. Uh, I had a situation not long ago. I was actually in your neck of the woods. I was in Campbell, California, visiting my sister. We were walking down the street and there was a homeless gentleman. And I, I actually had a time in my life where I ended up on the streets many years ago. And that was during the time of lack of gratitude. And today I'm very blessed. I have a lot of abundance. And this gentleman, he was walking down the street, had his hand out. And so I reached in my pocket and pulled out 26 cents. And I was going to reach in and get some more money. And I handed him the 26 cents and he looked at it and he said, you've got to be kidding. 26 cents. What am I going to do with that? And I was floored. I was like, oh my goodness. And so I said, okay, fine. Put the money back in my pocket. And I thought, here you never realized what you gave up by not being grateful for what was being given. And not that I was the end all be all for him. And yet it's a really good uh, metaphor for life that when we discount what's in front of us, when we discount those things that we truly have to be grateful for, we don't notice what shows up. Now, there was a situation with a woman recently who was talking about how slow business is. And I said, why don't you do a gratitude exercise for 10 days? And she goes, you just don't get it. In my industry, this, that, and the other. And I said, no, you don't get it. That you may have business showing up, but you're so negative, people aren't going to want to do business with you. And when we are grateful for that one client that shows up and we give 100%, energetically we're attracting more business so it's really about energy more than anything mm -hmm. you know i take that to uh, uh my son and i were talking about dating and he's like oh you know no girls like me nobody's interested and i'm like you know what i've been through that i can't tell you how many times and it's always when you stop looking and you're happy with what you have that suddenly you're attractive and it's so true in business. You know, if, if you are beating yourself up about not making enough money or not having enough business, that negativity carries over into everything you say. It certainly does. And the thing that I always cringe at is when I see people posting stuff on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn about how slow business is and how crappy the clients are. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, do you realize people are reading that? Mm -hmm. And those are potential clients that could want to do business with you, but because of your attitude, they're not going to. I, I was actually talking with one of my aunts earlier today. She's uh, 88 years old. And we were talking about um, the ebb and flow of business. And I said, there's been times where I really wondered 
if I was going to make it through the month. I mean, it was, you know, we had tight times. And she said, but you never tell anybody that. And I said, that's for a mentor, that's for a coach, that's for an advisor. That's not for me to put out to the world because you get through those times as long as you put one foot in front of the other. Then when you get through it, then you can use your own experience as case studies with clients. Because oftentimes clients will look at somebody who's successful and they'll think that we've never had any problems, that we've never had tough times. And I'm like, oh my gosh, one of the best ways to get through tough times is to put one foot in front of the other and not focus on what's not working, but truly focus on what is working and ask better questions. The better question is not, oh my gosh, why is this happening? The better question is, hmm, I wonder what I need to do to get to the other side of this situation. And constantly be curious and look for those opportunities and create those opportunities. Yeah, I think a lot of times we shut ourselves down, you know, to the point that we don't even see those opportunities when they come up because we're so sad about how we're not getting enough work and we're not working enough. And it's a vicious cycle. Um, you know, I, I think that appreciation, gratitude, those things are absolutely key elements for people to move forward. But let let's take that a little bit further too in that let's say for example that we're in a job that we hate and we've always wanted to do something else there's some passion in our lives that we wanted to pursue but we're afraid to go there because you know we need the money we'll lose the house all of those horrific things will come down on our heads and the world will end how will you say to that it probably will. If you have that <laughs> attitude, it probably will. And you know, and I speak from personal experience of like whenever it was doom and gloom, I managed to create that so I could be right. But the, the reality is, is that if you're at a certain place in your life and you want to get somewhere else, you have to realize that you can't work at the same level that you're working at right now. You may have to work extra hours. You may have to give up that TV show that you really like to, you know, I love the voice. But if it's a matter of giving up the voice and writing my, my memoir, I'm going to write my memoir if I truly say I want to get my memoir done. And it's the same with somebody in a job. If they say that they want to start a business, the first thing that I always recommend is to get really honest about how much effort you're willing to put into the, the process of getting to the other side. I met with a client just yesterday who actually is going through that very thing. She has something that's taking a lot of her time and yet she wants to build a new business. And I said, one of the first areas that we need to discuss is your time and how you're managing your time and what you're willing to do with your time in order to accomplish what you say you want to accomplish. The reality is, is that a lot of people don't understand what it means to run a business. They think that they can open a business and not invest any money in it. You have to invest in a business. I mean, that's just a fact of life. However, you can be smart about how you invest. I always recommend that people check with your local chamber, find out what programs they have available that may not cost you money. Check with SCORE, check with SBA. There are resources available that you can at least gather the information and put a plan together. But when you're ready to actually launch your business, a few of the things you need to do is you need to get a DBA. You need to actually get somebody that's gonna help you with your taxes. This is where I see a lot of people have problems. You need to be willing to invest in marketing material and you need to invest in your marketing. And it doesn't mean it has to be outrageous amounts. It means you need to be smart about what you're doing. But if you're at a place that you're not happy there, think of where you want to be and what needs to happen to go from where you're at to where you want to be. And truthfully, what are you willing to do? I had somebody email me today who wants to write a book and he goes, I really want to write a book. I want to get out and speak, but I'm so fearful. What if people don't hire me? What if this, what if that? And I said, well, what if? And you'll never know until you actually put yourself out there and you're willing to fail. And it doesn't mean you're purposely looking to fail, but the bigger the risk you take, the more likely it is that you're going to have times that things don't work out. Rather than getting upset about it, ask a better question again. Like, okay, what can I learn from that? What do I need to do to get to the next level? Because truly it is about walking through fear. It is about surrounding ourselves with the people who have the level of success that we're looking for and finding out what their strategy is. 
1994, I actually got certified as a NLP practitioner. And one of the things in NLP that they teach is you find a model of something that, that you want to have, and you actually look at, you break down the recipe, you break down the strategies, and you say, okay, will that work for me? And you have to look at, if you say no, is it your fear speaking or is it the truth speaking? And oftentimes the fear is disguised in ways that it prevents us from moving forward. So it's really looking for the people you can surround yourself with that will force you to get out of your comfort zone. Because if you wanna stay comfortable, you don't wanna be an entrepreneur. Trust me, I've been doing this for 23 years in my current business. And there have been very uncomfortable times in my life. And there's been very, very comfortable times. And when I get too comfortable, that's when I usually have to push myself and, and go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, it's really common in Silicon Valley to say that you fail forward. And I think, you know, if you don't take those risks, if you don't jump, then you're never going to find out. And if you don't fail, you're not trying hard enough. Absolutely. And, you know, I'll give you an example that really has nothing to do with business, and yet it has everything to do with business. Mm -hmm. uh, for my 61st birthday a few years ago, I decided I was going to really stretch myself and do something out of the ordinary, and I signed up for a marathon. And, uh, <laughs> and I failed beautifully. I, it took me eight and a half hours to complete the marathon. They had already closed the doors. It, people, the, the gates were closed. Nobody was around. And I was like, Where's the crowd? Well, they all went home hours ago. And so the following year, I signed up, and this time I got it done in seven hours and three minutes. Well, this year for my 63rd birthday, I'm actually doing a half marathon, and I did it differently. I hired a coach. I joined a team. I have been getting trained, and every day I, I learn something that will help me to achieve the end result. Now, what's interesting is when I first started, the first race that I, I joined, it was like a 5K. I was so intimidated. I was like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Why am I here? I can't believe I'm doing this. And now when I go to races, it's like, hey, Mary, hey, Bob, how you doing? You know, I've, I've grown into a level of success as a runner that I never dreamed I would, but it was by being consistent. It was by getting a good coach. It was by surrounding myself with people better than me. It was learning the strategies. And I apply that to my business because the very strategies that I use for consistency in my physical well being, it goes into my business well being also. Sure, that totally makes sense. Can you tell us a little bit about what those structures are in your business? How do you keep yourself on track? Uh, one is I treat my business like a business. I actually, I, I worked out of my home for 19 years and I think working out of your home is a great thing if, if you can do it. I had just reached a point where I really, we have a lot of rescue animals and my animals were getting pretty frustrated when I would close the door to do a teleseminar or webinar. It's like <laughs> scratch, scratch, scratch. It's like, okay, something's not working. Here. But the main thing is, is regardless of the environment you're in, you have to treat your business like a business, which means I come to my office Monday through Friday, and I'm always in my office by 10 a.m. because I train for my marathon in the morning. So my, I have my, my open hours. I answer my phone. Big one is I answer my phone. That's something a lot of people don't do. I also have to-do lists. I also have an accountant for my business. I also pay myself. I also pay my monthly taxes my quarterly taxes, my annual taxes. I don't put myself into situations that are going to uh, cripple my business. Mm -hmm. I also have a set number of people that I reach out to on a regular basis. Um, I have mentors and coaches that work with me on areas, specific areas in my business that I need to grow. What I needed 23 years ago is absolutely not what I need now. I surround myself with people more successful than myself so that it forces me to grow because it's really easy to be a big fish in a little pond. Yeah. If you really want to see what you're made of, be a little fish in a big pond and, and really go out and, and make the magic happen. Um, so it's really about having systems and strategies in place. I also have the software that supports my business. I have a support team. I have an online business manager that handles my tech team and my online team. Um, I do advertising in my business. I do marketing my business. So there's a number of different structures that um, have to take place. When I come to my office, I'm here to work. I'm not here to talk to friends on the phone. I'm not here, although my clients are like friends. I mean, I get a lot of great with my clients. 
But what I, the, the point being is I treat my business like a business. I think that's the number one rule that if you want to have a successful business, determine am I a hobbyist or am I a business owner? There's a big distinction. And a lot of people who call themselves business owners are really running a more of a hobby. And the big one is if you're not paying yourself, you're not running a business. You should be paying yourself before anybody else because otherwise you end up resenting your business. Boy, isn't that true? And the tax man, and 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 it all oh, builds yeah. on itself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That it, it's it's frightening when I think about the people that um, come tax time, come the end of the year, they're they're realizing, oh shoot, I didn't take any money out to pay taxes. And one of the things that I I actually do in my business, and I advise my clients to do this is take a percentage. We take 20% right off the top of everything that comes into the business. It goes into a tax account. My accountant has access to that account so that she can make sure that every month the employee taxes are paid and we keep books. You should know what your numbers are too. That's another thing about running the business, but pay your taxes. Don't, don't, don't get into that fine. That's scary. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle and a, and a money pit on top of it because it just... Oh, yeah. I don't want to pay a lot of people more than they already get. And, yeah. and here's another thing. Let's talk about gratitude again. Let's go back to that. Sure. Um, when I pay my taxes, I'm actually grateful for it because it means that I've made money. And when I write checks, I put thank you in the memo line every single time I put thank you. And I, I bless the bills that I have. It, it's like to resent that, that goes back into that contraction mentality. So it's really about having an attitude of really appreciating everything that's going on and looking at it as a blessing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really important. It, it's, it all circles around, doesn't it? That if you are living in that negativity, then that's what you're going to have more of. Absolutely. And, and rather than saying, I have to do something, say, I get to do something. I posted on Facebook about that yesterday because I was going on a five mile run last night and uh, one of my aunts said, you have to go on a run. And I said, no, I get to go on a run. <laughs> I get to do these things. And, and it's true. It's like, it's all about shifting the way that we view what we're doing. Mm hmm Mm hmm Absolutely. So let's switch a little bit to working with entrepreneurs. I know you work as a coach in sales and marketing and also authorship. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially maybe I don't even call them entrepreneurs yet, entrepreneurs in training perhaps, who are trying to break out, they really struggle with their messaging. And one of the things that I, I read on your website is a quote, your business is not just what you do, but why you do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's absolutely essential, but so few businesses can really put together their messaging and not just an elevator pitch, but their messaging. And how do we, how do we help them through that process? Well, one is to, to realize that business is different today than it was in the past. Today, we can be very transparent. We can be very much who we are. And what I have discovered in the time that I've been doing business is the more that I'm authentic about who I am, one of my areas of passion is animal rescue. A few years ago, I actually, um, we have three horses, three dogs, a cat, and most of them are rescues. Um, it was a few years ago that we decided no more animals because it, it's like we pay, we, we take really good care of our animals. And we had just invested a whole bunch of money in one of our, our pets. And we said, okay, God, that's it. No more animals. Well, the next day, this thing shows up at our doorstep. We didn't even know what kind of dog it was. She was in such bad shape. It turns out that she was about 10 years old at the time probably a breeder dog because she had tumors all over her belly. Her teeth were all rotted out. She had infections in her eyes and she was a purebred toy sheep suit. So she had had the, the heck bred out of her. She was just like on death's door. And we thought we were going to have to put her down. Well, that was three years ago. She's the most entitled little dog that I've got. <laughs> and what I did is the, the first surgery that she needed to remove the tumors, because the vet said her blood work is great. If you do the surgery, she'll have a quality of life. And so we did the first surgery. That was about $2,000. And I thought, you know, there must be a way to offset the, the fee for the second surgery. Let me see if my community will help me out. 
So I created an information product. I said it's going to be about how to market on Kindle. It's going to be X amount of money. Uh, I did a Kickstarter around it. I did a whole bunch of things, all online marketing, to get the message out. Well, I get a call from a woman who, during this whole process, and we did raise enough to pay for Delaney's surgeries and her dental work and the whole nine yards. This woman calls me up and she said, I, I see that you're doing a, uh, a fundraiser for your dog, and I'd like you to come out and speak at our conference. It's for animal bloggers. And I said, well, that's not my market. And she goes, but you know how to make money online, and that's what we want to bring to our market. Would you come out and speak to animal bloggers? I said, sure. And so we talked about the arrangements and everything. I went out and spoke at her conference. That one opportunity opened up several huge conference opportunities to speak. Um, I'm actually going out in a few months to speak to 600 people in the pet space. Um, I've gotten private clients in the pet space. The one choice to do what was in front of me and be transparent about it, put it out to my market and make it a part of my branding has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Did I know that at the time? No, I didn't. What I did is I answered a calling, but I put it out and I, it was a part of my branding and that has evolved into other areas. So in answer to your question, what I recommend that people do is look at where your real passion resides and start telling your story because you'll find that as you share your story, that's where part of your messaging will come from. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's great. I think it really, you have to, have, how do I put this? There are a lot of people who go into businesses because they think that business is going to make them money, but there isn't a lot of passion behind it. It isn't their life's purpose. It isn't something that they're really that excited about. It's like those people who think they're going to retire and we'll just buy a little cafe, which my restaurant industry background makes me cringe because right, right. <laughs> you can't be an amateur at that. Right. So, you know, I, I think that, we need to we need to find a way for people to craft their messaging around what their passion really is and then have the guts to go for it which neither of those things are very easy to do you know they're not because we are taught in the old model of business is there needs to be a real separation between who we are personally and who we are mm. professionally in today's world, like when I go out and do keynote presentations, I wear Western boots and I wear Levi's and I wear a leather jacket. That's my branding. That's who I am. And I wore the business suits for years. And I actually had a consultant that I hired and I paid a lot of money to tell me that I looked like an old frumpy grandmother in my business. <laughs> Get rid of it. And it's like, I just paid you that much money to tell me that. It was a great recommendation. And and I listened. See, that's the thing. I paid her and I listened to what she had to say. But part of it is having the willingness to, to be who you are, but also knowing if you're crossing a line and, and you're not being professional. Like, I can be very professional in my Levi's, my boots. And I actually had an opportunity to speak for a local uh, government organization recently. And it, I was donating my time and I, I met with the uh, powers that be and I said, okay, here's what you need to understand. My branding is Levi's, Western boots, and a leather jacket. If you're okay with that, then I'm all over it. I'll do it. And um, they're, they're like, okay. So I sent in my, my uh, promo pictures and one of the women goes, oh, you, you have to wear a suit. You can't do that. And I said, oh, you don't seem to understand. I'm not wearing a suit. This is who I am. I have something that you want and I will do a great presentation. Well, the day of the presentation, I, I wore what I wear and she was sitting there with her arms crossed. At first she was just like, hmm. And then pretty soon she's opening her arms. Pretty soon she's leaning forward. After she came up and she goes, that was incredible. And it was about the, the whole message that I was giving was be who you are and know what the environment is and own your power around that. So it really is about people owning who they are and, and understanding that you don't need to be all things to all people. You just need a small segment of the market that you can go deep into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So let's switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, as a consultant, as a mentor and a coach, how do you vet clients so that you know that it's somebody, I mean, do you, how do you, how do you do that? Let me back off and not put any words in your mouth. <laughs> oh, put the words in my mouth. That's okay. Okay. One is I, I'm very much who I am. What, what you see here is how I am with my clients. Um, 
And another thing is that um, if, if somebody absolutely doesn't like animals, I probably can't get along with them, <laughs> seriously. Um, I, also, I also have a wife. I've, I've been with my partner for 28 years, and that's a part of what I uh, people know about me. And if that's an issue for them, I probably can't do business with them. Um, it, if they're cruel to other people, I can't do business with them. So I have a real sense intuitively of the people I enjoy working with. And through where I get most of my business is through my presentation. So when I'm on the platform and I'm sharing stories, if people rush to the back of the room and they want to talk to me and they say, oh my gosh, I want to do business with you. I know after they've heard me for an hour sharing stories that they're probably going to be a, a relatively good fit. The next level is, can they afford me? You know, that's, it's nice to want to work with somebody, but if you're not willing to put money in the, in the game, then probably that's not going to work. That's what I have information products for. The next thing is, is that I do little tests. And part of the test is, do you respect my time? Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, if I give you an assessment to fill out and you say, I'll have it to you by next Tuesday and you have it to me next Thursday, that already indicates to me that you're not respecting your time, you're not respecting my time. So there's indicators of what I look for in the ideal client. And usually what I'll say is, let's start with this particular program that we can work together on. Let's see if at the end of, whether it be 30 days or 90 days, if we even like each other anymore. That's, I, that's part of my close, it's like, you know, I don't know if you're even going to like me after 30 days because you might say, oh my gosh, she's really going to make me work. If we still get along really well after 30 days and you've done the work and you've gotten the result, then you're going to want to continue on with me. So I don't jump right into a long, long-term relationship with them until I really know that we can work well together. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I know, I, and I'm sure that you didn't learn this like when you were 20. <laughs> I know uh, for myself. A lot, a lot that I knew when I was 20. <laughs> I was like, oh, it'll be coming out in my memoir. There <laughs> you I go. That, that actually should be the name of the book. What I didn't know when I was 20. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great name for a book. Because, you know, I, I know throughout my career, every once in a while, I will go, why did I take this client? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and you have this incredible guilt for having taken that client because now you've made yourself responsible and whether they're responsible or not, you're still responsible. You're so right. And, and I think part of it is having the willingness to walk away from something when you really get a, a gut level feeling that this is not going to work. And, you know, no matter how long we've been in business, we can still, um, we can fall back on old behaviors and an old behavior is in the, in the early days of my business, if somebody said, who's your ideal client? I said, anybody who can fog a mirror and pay me. <laughs> that was it. You know, it's like, okay. Classic. Um, I had no clue. I had no clue. Now I'm really clear on the kind of people that I work with. And every so often I I've had to learn one more time that, it's just too painful for them and painful for me. Mm -hmm. And no matter how good the money is, because I, I get paid a substantial amount of money for my consulting. And no matter how good the money is, it's never good enough because there's the stress that comes with it. There's the sleepless nights. There's the, when I start getting angry about something a client is doing, then I know that I'm way off base. Mm -hmm. um, I should never get angry about what they're doing. I should maybe be frustrated, maybe, you know, help guide them in a different direction, but to be like, oh, I can't believe they did that. And I've done that. Trust me. I, I, I can have my little rants and, and I don't like that, that side of myself. So I do what I can to avoid that. Yeah. Cause that, ne that negativity really eats into you yeah. in a big way. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know, I, I think it's something that, I would assume that some of this, and not to put anybody on the spot, but that some of it has to do with your animal rescue efforts. Because when those things really touch your heart and you want to help someone because they have a wonderful passion and a great cause, sometimes it's still not a good fit, but you get suckered into it. And then <laughs> well, yeah, and, and a great example would be the person who recently has said, that um, you don't understand my industry is different because of X, Y, and Z. And no matter what answer she's been given, not just by me, but by other people, she's finding a reason why it won't work. 
for if I was to take her on as a client, I'm setting myself up and I'm setting her up. I already know that she is not open to recommendations. I already know she's already proven. And it, it's that, that saying that goes, um, don't listen to what a person says. Uh, they, what they do speaks volumes of who they are. I, I don't know quite how it goes, but it's really paying attention to the behaviors more than the words because we can make ourselves look great on social media, but what do we do behind closed doors? Um, yeah. What do we do when we're at the grocery store? And I, you know, the, I, I, I'm not gonna give a lot of detail, but I had a situation recently where I had the, I've been very blessed in my life and I know what it's like to not feel blessed and I love blessing people. And there was somebody that I truly felt needed a blessing and it was just like no cameras were rolling no well at the stores they always have cameras but the, <laughs> the point being it was like no, I wasn't there doing what I did to to get any accolades on it I did it because I felt cold and it's behind closed doors and it's what we do privately that really reflects who we are publicly mm. and so if we put on one persona publicly and we're completely different privately there's a whole mismatch. And so for me, it's like, am I truly in alignment in all different areas of my life? Am I truly the kind of person that has gratitude regardless of the situation? And it's not always easy. The toughest time I had was when uh, I was my mom's caretaker. It was a very, very difficult time in my life. And there were times that I just, I just wanted it all to go away. And yet every day I showed up and I did what was in front of me. And that's when you really know if you're following your path is, are you showing up to life regardless of the outward circumstances? Wow, yeah, yeah. And, and that integrity carries through into your business and, and everything else. And yeah. you know what, it's easier in the long run to be who you are instead of trying to create this ultimate persona and putting on the suit when it isn't you, because somebody demands that you do that, in the end, you know, everybody suffers. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, my mother actually used to tell me, don't, don't tell lies because then you never have to remember what you said. You know, <laughs> over your shoulder, it's like, wow, that was wise, wise words from my mother. It only took me until I was 40 to figure that one out. You know, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> you have a very wise mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kathleen, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. I, I got so much out of this, and it's always a pleasure to finally meet someone that I feel like I know face to face, as it were. Well, I, you know, I'm going to be down in your area. I, I visit my sister she's actually in Campbell and uh, so I, I would love to get together when I'm down in your area and I love your background I, you know, I've been looking at all your stuff it's like, oh, you've got some cool books but uh, it's been delightful I appreciate you inviting me here and I, I truly truly thank you and I just want to encourage people go out and do what you're here to do and realize life is really short it spins on a dime and you only have today to do what you're here to do you may think you have years and you might so be accountable in today, live fully in today, and watch the magic happen as you move forward. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Why don't you tell people quickly how they can find you? Thank you. I will do that. They can actually go to a, one of two websites. One is powerupforprofits.com, powerupforprofits.com, or for women, passionforthriving.com. Mm -hmm. That's Passion for Thriving. And then on Facebook, just look me up, Kathleen Gage. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I actually, you know, actually, it's only been in the last six months since we've had our one of our fearless leaders <laughs> who's been doing a lot of Twitter. I thought, you know, let me check this Twitter thing out. And I love Twitter. <laughs> Um, but I'm also on LinkedIn, but the place to really find me is on Facebook. Great. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. And just to let everybody know, this will be on the website, mindfulsocialmarketing.com. It'll also be on my YouTube channel and it's on iTunes and Spreaker and almost every podcast channel you can think of. Uh, so keep an eye out for those and uh, say hello to Kathleen and be sure to visit her websites. Thank you. Thanks everybody.